Welcome to the channel. I want to start this video with a little bit of a magic trick. On the Benjolin here, I have two oscillators. The first one sounds like this. Very steady, a little boring. One oscillator, no modulation. Then I have the other oscillator, oscillator one. Similarly, no modulation, a slightly different pitch. Now, I'm going to make things interesting. I'm going to create a feedback loop from the low pass filter, which is taking the compared output of the two triangle waves. That's the output of the Bentolin. I'm going to take that low pass filter. I'm going to run it into oscillator one. Open this up. Now we have a feedback loop chaotic modulation. Every cycle of oscillator one, it's being influenced by the output of the filter and changing its frequency. What kind of sound do you expect to hear from oscillator one right now? Is that a bit of a surprise? It's a steady pitch, and it's not just any steady pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pitch of oscillator two. Think about that for a moment. These two oscillators were not tuned to the same note when I first demonstrated them to you. I promise there's no movie magic or fancy editing going on here, but we now have two similar tones, similar pitches. Why is that? The answer is that we have made a phase locked loop. A what? A phase locked loop, PLL. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a moment to explain what a phase locked loop is. So the whole idea of a phase locked loop is that you have some audio source, some signal, and you would like another oscillator to track the frequency, the pitch of that incoming signal. But you don't have any information about the pitch except for the audio waveform itself. The phase lock loop takes these two signals, compares their phase, smooths that through a low pass filter, and then runs that into the pitch control on your following oscillator. The reasoning behind this is that if the two oscillators have the same frequency and the same phase, their waveforms should be relatively identical to each other. If you have oscillator one and oscillator two, if you look at the difference between their phase, their alignment, at any given point in time, it should be equal if they're the same. And as it goes out of equality, out of alignment, we get a signal that we smooth out a little bit and then send to that oscillator to move it up and down so that it continues to follow. When the two signals are out of phase, when they're out of phase and even at different frequencies, if you compare the two waveforms at any given point in time, you'll have difference between them. And that difference is the voltage that we're applying to our oscillator to move it up and down. There are a variety of ways to make this phase comparison. You can use a comparator like on the Benjolin here, you can use an XOR logic signal. There are more complex ways of doing this. Uh, phase lock loops get used in all sorts of electronics, uh, radios, scientific equipment, like phase lock loops are everywhere for signal processing. And the big reason that I want to talk about phase lock loops, and um, uh, particularly in relationship to the Benjolin, is this idea of feedback. Because feedback, we often think about as a very chaotic, 
noisy process. It's something that spirals bigger and bigger into chaos. But feedback is also essential to control. And in cybernetics, feedback is a system of measuring something and then user using that measurement to control something and you measure it again and you control it again to maintain some alignment or to um, stay within a set of parameters. This is how an air conditioning system works. Your AC measures the temperature and it says, oh, the temperature in the room compared to the temperature that we want is higher or it's lower. We need to take the AC and either run it or leave it off. Or in the case that we're using a combined heating and cooling, we could even say we need to increase the temperature or decrease the temperature to either heat or cool. And then we do that. We measure it. We say, oh, the heat has gone on too much, too hot. Let's cool it down. Let's let it rest a little bit. And so we stay in that area. And as the temperature fluctuates up and down, AC measures and controls. This is a cybernetic feedback loop of control, often called a negative feedback loop, in that instead of spiraling outward, it spirals inward towards a state of equilibrium, a state of control. And it's a different way to use this thing that we often think about as very explosive and chaotic as something that is very useful in a lot of more controlled processes. So let's play around with it a little bit and just listen to how it sounds. Because the thing that makes these sorts of processes beautiful in synthesis is the ways that they're not perfect. We already hear that we have a different timbre that we're working with here. But as I, I sweep this and change the amount that the our control signal in feedback is influencing the oscillator, I want you to listen and notice something particular. Then we're back to our original signal. We get this real variety in character. And now I'm going to adjust the pitch of oscillator one and get even, even more difference here. And you'll hear that we're, as we separate the pitch of these with our particular control system here, we're locking on not just to the original pitch, but to subharmonics. We're doing our best, and that's good enough. I'm going to continue to play around with the two oscillators. I'm also going to adjust oscillator 2 so that you can hear how it follows. can also adjust the filter. The filter needs to be aligned more or less to our oscillator here in order to, to stay with it.
we can get even more. The more that we adjust some of these other parameters, we can sort of push this and get weirder sounds from it, which is which is great. And that gives us a, a wide possibility of related sounds that are all uh, related in pitch to our sort of core or root, which is the oscillator two here. But we get all of these timbres and characters around it. That's what makes uh, things like a phase lock loop so great. Now, the Rungler has a bit of its own special relationship to everything that's going on here, but putting that aside, we can think about it as something that is pushing the signal around as well in a chaotic way. This all starts to get really interesting when we start to sequence our oscillator and move it around. This uh, the, our oscillator one is following this and hitting different combinations of subharmonics as they diverge. So uh, this is not the focus of this video, but I'm going to build a little sequencer using my clock divider here. Run the clock divider, and I'm going to take a couple of its outputs into. A mixer with attenuation so we get different values here from our different clock steps. I'm gonna run that sum into here and let's listen to just the pulse 2 signal first, our dry signal if you will. That sounds pretty fun. So let's now listen to our following signal. It's important to open the filter so that it's working with the signal that we have here. Actually, I'm going to take a moment to put both of these through the crossfader that I have here so that we can hear a blend of the original signal with the others. So two new patch cables into the crossfader separate from the other channels that sum into the mixer. And so now we can hear pulse two, our original on A. And our following signal on B, and a mix of the two. And you hear how, as it locks onto these subharmonics, we create different harmonies as it as it locks on in different ways. We can really rough up that signal, but it still has the the shape or the silhouette or the skeleton of our original. This is sort of a weird idea video. I've just been thinking a lot about phase locked loops, and then I realized that the Benjolin can be one. I haven't really talked about the Rungler. I'm thinking about the Rungler as a delayed phase comparator. 
I'm just going to say that and I'm not going to explain it anymore right now. I'm sorry. The one thing that I do want to add on closing out is that with this sort of frequency follower, sometimes you don't really need the filter. Um, you can just run your comparator straight into the other signal. Let me. So. We can get a different and sometimes cleaner tracking signal without the filter. And I mean, in part, that's because the filter on the Benjolin is not built for this sort of PLL purpose. Um, and so we can just skip it uh, and we get something great too. I guess the other thing that I want to say about this is that it doesn't have to be a comparator. Uh, I think I mentioned before that an XOR logic is very commonly used as a phase comparator. Um, a ring modulator can also be a phase comparator. Anything that's giving you the difference of two signals will let you then measure alignment between your two oscillators. And so there are a variety of ways to do this. This sort of I always thought phase comparators were way more complicated, um, but they're really like it's a word that describes several very basic building blocks of synthesis, and we can use those to create some really cool tracking and following effects. So I hope you enjoyed this little digression into a weird corner of synthesis. These ideas are fairly new to me, but I feel like I finally get phase lock loops, and I'm happy to share that with you all. Enjoy.